So now we are going to look at the NAND gate one more time. And we have a 74HC132. So last uh, video we had the 74HC00. There was no Schmidt trigger symbol in that uh, integrated circuits uh, symbol because it wasn't a Schmidt trigger version. So we have a Schmidt trigger version here. A uh, 74HC132 is the one that I have. I don't know how many other ones might be out there. Um, but uh, apparently that's the one I have and I drew this diagram a long time ago. So when it comes to the NAND gate, if uh, any input is low, then the output is high. Uh, pretty straightforward. If all inputs are high, then the output will be low. So it's the opposite of an AND gate. AND gate, those would be zeros and that would be a one. You would need all inputs high in order for the output to be high. This is the opposite. Now you need all inputs high in order for the output to be low. And as I usually do, when the output is high, it's as close to five volts as it can be right there. Red LED lights up. And when the output is low, it connects to ground as good as it can right there. And the blue LED will light up. So now we come back to the circuit. I thought that was the negative supply, but it doesn't matter. That one's to the negative supply. Again, any low input will be a high output right there. We got uh, the trim pot, which can get a middle ground voltage. So without the Schmidt trigger uh, input, then a middle ground voltage at the input will lead to a middle ground voltage at the output. And so we're just using the number one um, NAND gate right there. There's another NAND gate below it. We got the inputs tied to a supply rail to stabilize the uh, integrated circuit right there for all of them. Can neither go to the positive or negative, doesn't matter, but don't uh, put anything with power to it to the output. Um, make sure you always have a load at the output if you wire it up. So we're already at the positive supply for that input, input A, the upper one right there. Now we go back to negative. Now I can turn the trim pot, doesn't matter. Where I set the trim pot, output's gonna be high because we have one input that is low, so. Let's get uh, this jumper back to the uh, positive supply right there. Now we're gonna look at the Schmidt trigger. So we had the 74HC00, which uh, was basically the same integrated circuit, but it didn't have the Schmidt trigger input. When I got somewhere around halfway, both of them kind of looked like they were lit up and um, we had a middle ground voltage. So current could you know travel uh, through the circuit and uh, whatnot and just going in or out of the output as its voltage change. But here you can see we got a sudden change. Uh, red goes right to blue, so low output right now. Now we got a red output. Went right from blue to red. They weren't both lit up for a little bit of time. It jumped. So you can see how far I got to move the trim pot before it jumps back and forth right there. That's the hysteresis. This is the middle ground region where the input can either be high, which it is now, still high, and now it is low, and it still is when I put it there. So the middle ground region can be either uh, a high input, so that's low output, or a low input, that is high output. That's in that middle. Of course, if you go high enough, then it's a high input, no matter what. You go low enough, it's a low input, no matter what. It's that middle ground region doing, uh, you know, providing whatever it was last set to. So now, of course, always consult the data sheet for whatever integrated circuit you are using and you get a name for it. And whatever data sheet I was looking at, it said quad two input NAND gate with Schmidt trigger inputs uh, right there. Each output right there can provide about 25 milliamps of current either as a source, positive, or as a sink, uh, where it's negative uh, right there. Um, apparently this one's uh, 75 milliamps uh, total current though. So you could use three of them at like 25 milliamps of current. If you try to use uh, all four of them, you're gonna have to lower it a little bit, I guess somewhere around like 15 milliamps of current, uh, just a quick estimate. Um, but uh, any case, a lot of these integrated circuits is 50 milliamps of current. So that's why you check uh, the data sheet um, for all the uh, specifics that you can. And we already went over the true table right there. These uh, integrated circuits, of course, you gotta power them. So uh, VCC, that's the positive supply to pin 14, and then the negative supply, uh, ground down to uh, pin seven right there. And the pin layout's the same. We got inputs on top, output on the bottom. Again, there's other integrated circuits where the inputs might be down there and then the output uh, there. So that uh, the outputs are in the middle for both of them, you know. So I always check the data sheet um, to uh, verify that I didn't make a mistake 
or that it's just you know not a different pin layout than a similar integrated circuit that uh, you are used to. Now these integrated circuits are susceptible to shock. This is another one where I have just one. So I got two kits and uh, one of the kits this particular one is missing so I know I fried it at some point. Before I touch it I try to uh, discharge myself from any static electricity I may have uh, built up. Um, something to be aware of. And uh, finally I think I covered everything else. The uh, red LEDs are not as bright as the blue LEDs. There you can see blue LED is pretty bright right there. Got somewhere around uh, 2 or 3 milliamps of current flowing through it. And then uh, when we uh, set this uh, to the negative supply, so we got a high output, the red LED closer to like 11, 12 milliamps of current right there. It's only got a 220 ohm resistor protecting it from ground. And it uh, doesn't matter whether the LED or resistor comes first, but uh, it works out pretty well this way to have the LEDs to the output. Of course, I have a jumper, you know, bringing the output over to this roll where the long lead, the anode of the red LED, and the short lead, the cathode of the blue LED uh, connect together right there. Uh, but they're a direct connection to the output uh, via the uh, jumper. 220 ohm resistor protecting the red LED. 1000 ohm resistor. Blue LED drops a little bit more voltage and it has a higher value resistor. That's why we got so much less uh, current. So um, that's uh, stuff you learn when you first learn electronics. Although not everybody learns everything basically in the order that uh, you generally assume they would. You know, Some people will start off with this video and then go from there. Um, so yeah, hopefully this all made sense. In any case, that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.